Boxing Ego here. If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon on the top of your screen to get notified when the latest new content drops. One. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego and I'm back with some more boxing. Make sure you smash the like button. Also subscribe to the channel for the latest and greatest in boxing. If you want to become part of the gang gang, notification gang, please hit the bell icon. Shout out to the Super Chats channel donations the venmo and the patreon family we working now i gotta admit man this shit is like clockwork deontay wilder frequent promoter he's advised by al Heyman, but lou debella oftentimes puts together his fights and organizes them especially the new york ones and debella did an interview with sky sports he said some very interesting and eerily similar things to what I said. If you guys follow the channel, I did a live stream and this was one of the focal points of this. And like I said, like clockwork, you have somebody else in the industry, a respected person like Lou DiBella, promoter, who's corroborating and saying almost identically the same thing that I've been telling you guys. But we'll get to the quote and then I'll tie it all together for you. Lou DiBella said to Sky Sports, and the link is in the description in case you want to see the actual article. He said the concept that we would somehow feel obligated or the necessity to fight Dillian White for a chance at Anthony Joshua to fight Joshua is a joke. In the past, this is a fact. We offered Huey Fury on numerous occasions to fight Deontay Wilder. He turned us down. We would love to fight Joseph Parker at any point, at any place. They could put it in a soccer stadium in New Zealand and Deontay would still knock him out. We're not running from that fight. We're not running from any fight. He goes on to say, it's nothing against Dillian White personally, but I have no need to discuss Dillian White. Dillian White is irrelevant to the future of Deontay Wilder. If Dillian White is such a force in the heavyweight division, why is AJ fighting Carlos Tackham and not Dillian White? Once Kubrat Pulev was injured, I can imagine AJ could have fought anyone he wanted and Dillian White was scheduled to fight, so why isn't AJ fighting Dillian White? He said, I think AJ is a great young fighter, but I think the greatest danger to AJ in the world is Deontay Wilder. I think the fight will eventually happen. So those are comments from promoter Lou DiBella. And like I said, a lot of what I say, and look at the time in which I'm saying, you guys can go to YouTube, look at the past videos, timestamps, dates, all that, and it's funny because you have people in the industry who are saying the same exact thing that I've been saying. And look who's saying it first. You know what I mean? Now, the issue is this. Dillian White, he's a good fighter. He's a solid fighter. But what Eddie Hearn is doing, in my opinion, is using Dillian White. Maybe he owes him a fight or something, a big fight. Because Dillian White, I remember he did an interview on YouTube that I seen. And he was talking about how Eddie Hearn... Eddie Hearn needs to give him a big fight and, and stuff like that. So that's whatever deal they got going on. You know what I mean? So maybe Eddie Hearn feels he has an obligation to get Dillian White a major marquee fight. That could be one issue. But more importantly, I think that Eddie Hearn is using Dillian White as a defense mechanism because his cash cow is AJ. And like Lou DiBella is saying in this interview, the biggest threat to AJ right now is Deontay Wilder. You could talk about other guy, Daniel Dubois in the future, or this guy and that guy, but right now, the biggest threat, the biggest money fight, is Deontay Wilder. And like I said, normally, under regular circumstances, Tyson Fury could be mentioned in this same, in the same equation. However, he's taken himself out of talks because he had his personal demons outside of the ring. No one beat him in the ring, but he lost his belts outside of the ring due to decisions he made outside of those ropes. You know what I mean? Testing positive for cocaine, gaining a lot of weight. He got suspended as a result. Just recently got his license back. Now said he doesn't even want his license. Uh, British, he's not going to apply for the British license, etc. So with Tyson Fury being eliminated, Klitschko retiring, there is no other threat that is currently as big and as dangerous to Anthony Joshua's um, reign as Deontay Wilder. I don't care what anyone says, and I'm a fan of both of the fighters, right? Much respect to both of the fighters, but 
like I said, I see what's happening. And I used an example in the live stream yesterday, but that's a two hour live stream. So you may not have caught it. And I'll reiterate what people are saying. The fans, it, it's this way. This promote. Listen, I've been in the game long enough. And bottom line is this promoters do little things like this and throw out little pieces of bait, hoping that fans will cling on to it and you can buy time. For example, um, Mayweather and Pacquiao, everyone wanted to see the fight. Top rank knew that. Manny Pacquiao knew that. So no matter who, how big or small the fight Pacquiao was going into, people would attach the Mayweather name. Top rank would, mat would attach the Mayweather name. Freddie Roach and Pacquiao would bring up Mayweather, say they're fighting Chris Algieri, which wasn't a really highly sought out desired fight. But then when you add Mayweather and, and the enigma and the possibility of Pacquiao fighting Mayweather, then maybe people are going to watch the Algeria fight a little bit more because they think Mayweather is going to be the, the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. You know what I'm saying? So there's little promoter tricks. And another one is to me to protect the asset. You have to make people go through certain um, hurdles to get to the prize and, and it's a it's a form of stalling like golden boy golden boy versus triple g they threw out for canelo their cash cow will pay golovkin a flat rate first it was golovkin got to come down to 155 a man-made weight division right then canelo was like all right whatever i'll move up to 160 but we want to give golovkin a flat rate of 15 million dollars and it sounds good and Arguably, Golovkin, you know what I mean? Maybe he doesn't deserve more than that based on his drawing power or his, his failed pay-per-view attempts or whatever. So that's what created the conversation and the riff at that time. People were like arguing. Instead of just saying Canelo and Triple G should fight, people start getting caught up in the whirlwind and the whirlpool of does Golovkin deserve a percentage or a flat rate? So it's these little deflection and diversion detour tactics that promoters use you know what i mean because we should be talking about canelo he had the belt at the time should he fight golovkin and when is it going to happen but instead we're getting hung up as fans on if golovkin deserves a flat rate or if he deserves a percentage and again these are little promoter tricks i'm giving you guys a wide scope of promoter tricks that i've seen in the industry why when Canelo was fighting other people, they were getting a percentage, whatever they were getting. So Golovkin has some star power. So why all of a sudden is this flat rate a thing? You know what I mean? Why for Golovkin, why is he the first person that all of a sudden gets the flat rate? You know what I'm saying? And I think the same situation or a similar situation, a promoter tactic here with this Dillian White situation. Now the conversation, instead of us talking about Wilder Joshua, people are deflecting to Oh, Wilder's ducking Dillian White. But let me once again, in case you missed that two-hour live stream I did last night, let me reiterate something I said there. If Canelo was the middleweight WBC champion, which he did have the belt after he beat Miguel Cotto, right? And he says, I want to fight Gennady, Triple G, Golovkin, and K2 Promotions, hypothetical. This is all hypothetical. Let's say K2 Promotions was saying, no, you need to fight David Lemieux fight David let's say David Lemieux and Golovkin were both with K2 promotions that would be the equivalent of what's happening in this heavyweight picture so Canelo if he wanted to fight Golovkin a guy who beat David Lemieux by stoppage a guy who's a champion still unlike David Lemieux and a guy who's undefeated if Canelo wanted to fight Golovkin and K2 was like fight David Lemieux you'd be like Canelo if he was like nah I want to fight Triple G he's the undefeated one with the belt you know what I mean? And that's like the fans blaming Canelo and saying he's ducking David Lemieux when he wants to fight the guy that beat David Lemieux by stoppage and has belt and belts and is undefeated. It just doesn't make sense what people are trying to do with this whole Dillian White situation. Again, Dillian White's a good fighter. Me personally, I wouldn't mind seeing the fight, but you're not going to make it like Wilder's pressing Joshua and Joshua did the interview, said 2018, 19, 2020. We don't know. When the fight happens, it happens. It's going to happen on my watch, on my accord, right? 
So we're not gonna get caught up in this detour and go all the way left and make it as if Deontay Wilder, who's called out champion after champion, who was down to fight Alexander Povetkin in Russia, who was down to fight Luis Ortiz, these were these were these had time slots. These had dates, venues, networks willing to put it up. Purse was already agreed to. All of that. So through no fault of Wilder's own, the Povetkin fight fell apart. Failed drug tests on Povetkin's part. And same thing with Luis, Luis Ortiz. That's not his fault. You know what I mean? And you can't... Now all of a sudden, when it, it's... The, the heavyweight division is definitely getting narrowed down. Like I said, you got certain guys who can't pass tests. You got Klitschko who retired. You have Tyson Fury who doesn't look like he's in adequate shape. And didn't have a license for a while. And hasn't fought since 2015. Late 2015. We don't even know if he's going to be the same fighter. After gaining weight and going through what he went through with the cocaine and... He, he said he didn't really care about living and, you know, I mean, depression and different stuff like that. It was a witch hunt. So he felt ostracized. We don't know if he's going to be the same person. So um, right now, Cannon Briggs, he's older. He failed a drug test. He, he's suspended until mid-November, I think. You know what I mean? So the, the heavyweight division is getting down to the last few guys that that are eligible to put on these big fights right now. While the Daniel Dubois, the Tony Yokas, and Joy Joyce and... All these people build their brand up as new pros. You know what I mean? And that's the thing. But I agree with DeBella here, man. Like, people are making it like Wilder is ducking. Why would he be ducking Dillian White to fight the guy that knocked out Dillian White in the pros? And again, I don't care what happened in the amateurs because they had a chance to, you know what I mean? Dillian White had his opportunity to reduplicate what happened in the amateurs, but he came up short. He hurt Wilder. I watched the fight. He hurt him, but he didn't finish him off, and he got stopped. And I think DeBella brought up another interesting point, is once the pull of fight was off, you, you can't blame the fighter for another fighter getting injured. So Joshua probably had the freedom to choose who he wanted. And he's not fighting Dillian White, who's actually fighting on this card. He's not fighting. Dillian White didn't get elevated to. They went with Carlos Tackham. You know what I'm saying? But if Dillian White was just the man, then why didn't he rematch Joshua? First fight was a good fight. I'm sure Dillian White wants that. So again, I think it's it's really just an obstacle be thrown being thrown out there to um, prolong the Wilder Joshua fight, and I don't think it needs to be prolonged. You know what I mean? I think it should actually happen next year. You know what I mean? Get your mandatories out of the way, but. Again, some people are taking the bait. That's why I'm kind of giving my thoughts on this whole situation. Some people are taking the bait. The bait and it, it's realistically, this is very common forms of deflection. You know what I mean? And when I do the hot seat on live stream, this is what happens. I'm asking a person a direct question about something they said. And then they start talking about, oh, you did this, you did this. Oh, what about David Hay got stopped? Like that, none of that has nothing to do with the actual question. Here's another example through history: Malcolm X. When Malcolm X got shot, if you watch the movie, when Malcolm X got shot, there was a, a fight in the crowd, and they in the movie they reenacted. He was like, "Get your hands out my pocket!" And everyone in the crowd was like, "What? What's going on?" And then some people ran up and shot Malcolm X when he was on the stage on the podium, right? But that diversion, that decoy of this crowd altercation got people's attention away from what was really happening which was an assassination of malcolm x go watch the movie go read a history book that is exactly what happened so this happens all the time if you if you read or watch forensic files or crime shows and stuff what they do is um like you know what i mean calling a bomb threat six blocks down so the cops respond to that and then you go rob a bank because you know the cops are, are preoccupied investigating situation A is, is their diversion tactics. And I think this this is the same situation with this whole Dillian White thing. Again, if, if Deontay Wilder fights Dillian White, no problem. It's a good fight. But to make it sound like he's ducking when he wants to fight Joshua and Joseph Parker and has adamantly called them both out is ridiculous. And to make it sound like Joshua is so far he's the a side or whatever he, he does better seats you know what i mean because he comes from a different demographic and he's got a lot of exposure and unfortunately in america you it, it's a lot of americans don't even celebrate 
American champ. So it's just different out here. You see what's happening in the NFL. People, they're saying, oh, I have nothing. I'm, I'm, I'm patriotic. I love America. But we need to correct the situation with police brutality. Innocent brown and black kids and minorities being targeted and, and killed and shot. And people are against that. You know what I'm saying? So we got a lot of issues in America with um, Americans particularly the uk not so much uk they don't care they don't care where you're from they they like you they fuck with you and they're gonna turn out so you can say all of that but at the end of the day none of that matters and to make it like two champions one champion because he's the b-side in your opinion has to go through these extra hurdles and and hoops to get a fight with another champion and unify sounds ridiculous especially when you're making it like dillian white is the end-all be-all you know what I mean? Because bottom line is, Dillian White is a good fighter and he's ranked. Luis Ortiz was ranked higher and Wilder was going to fight him. Wilder is going to fight um, Luis Ortiz and he messed that up. Him and his team messed that up. So never get it twisted. And, and that's just the reality of the situation. Luis Ortiz was highly ranked and a mandatory for Joshua as well. And he was willing to fight them. So why would he be ducking Dillian White? I just don't think they think Dillian White is like like Debella is saying they don't think that Dillian White is a must see to get to a champion they're both champions why should a champion have to prove his worth he's been a champion longer than AJ you know what I'm saying so I completely disagree with Eddie Hearn I don't think Dillian White is the key master and he holds all the keys to the heavyweight division so if you want to get to the champ you got to go through D Dillian White like I, I just don't see that I don't see that as being the case. I don't think Dillian White is the end-all be-all. I think he's a good fighter. He has a great personality and a good work ethic. But if two champions want to rump and, and want to catch that wreck, they should be able to do it and should have a clear path to do it. So that's just my thoughts. Let me know what you guys think. Link in the description. Drop your thoughts in the comment section. Make sure you smash the like button. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. To the next video is Ego signing off. So if you enjoyed this video and want more content like this on the channel, you can show your appreciation by going to the PayPal donate button or the YouTube support button. And you can donate any amount that you feel is equivalent to the value of this video. Much more to come. Thank you guys for your support. Boxing Ego, the future of boxing.